Hey all, welcome back to Xeno Commentates Mega Man Revolution. This time we'll be wrapping up the game with the final three stages, starting with Premier 3. One of the best stages in the whole game. I don't know if I'd call it the best. I'd probably have to kind of critically think about all the stages, but of them all, I love the floor here. The music is godly. Um, the enemy recycling is actually done in a kind of thematic way because of the boss which I'll get to talking about later, but it's it's a well-bit level. It's pretty fair as well. There, there are only a few gripes I have with this stage overall. This is supposed to be the uh, an Evil Energy Depot. The These uh, crescent thingies you see in the background are, are evil energies being built. But anyways. Got these elevator segments that remind me of Gyro Man. The ones that bring you down have a, a, a small flaw that I'll, I'll bring up when I get to them. I think the next one is going to be a downwards one. But um, back to the stage. It's just mostly enemy challenges, but because it's... Because the uh, stage is supposed to be like an amalgamation, hint hint. Of, of all the Robot Master stages. I think it works fine. Here's the problem area. The Mets drop in random places, meaning they can just drop on your face if they want to. Um, my personal fix would have just been to drop them in the same place every time, or at least give a telegraph, because as it stands right now, if you want to avoid damage, you just have to use Wild Sprint, um, which sucks. This purple water hurts you, as you'd probably expect. It's really atmospheric, this stage, if nothing else. But for that alone, it does a pretty good job at what it seems to uh, aim to do. Here's a good opportunity to use Sand Shield because it blocks all of these uh, droplet things. Good weapon usage. See? That one just dropped straight on my face. Not a fan of that. So here's a gimmick that used to be a lot more prevalent in the previous versions of Revolution, there used to be these uh, destructible tiles all over the level that you're seeing me destroy right now. Um, the reason that they were dialed down is probably because they drop one of each tank and a life, which, as you can imagine, is kind of a bit overpowered because you can have max of every tank and max lives just from destroying these tiles. Now it's just relegated to that one at the very end, which is a nice secret. I appreciate that. So, why is reusing the, all the Robot Master assets, seemingly all eight of them, a good idea? Well, because, as you're seeing right now, the boss of this stage is the evil energy collection of all of their uh, souls, or whatever is happening here. The Amalgam. Now, for as cool as a concept as this is, it's unfortunately ruined by the fact that the AI is essentially move back and forth and randomly jump. That's literally what this is. All it does is move back and forth and use the respective robot weapon it's copying. And... It's pretty disappointing. For a no damage run, what you want to do is pray that it copies Blast Man so that you can use Wild Sprint and just kill him instantly. But otherwise, to no damage him, you just have to abuse Wild Sprint otherwise, just trying to get through him. Because the AI is just run around and shoot. It's all it boils down to. Disappointing. So, we've reached the letter R symbol, which might lead you to believe that we've reached uh, Ramir himself. And he spawns in this stupid little chair and tries to shoot us. This is actually really annoying. Um, especially for a no damage run. Just comes out of nowhere and starts freaking 
snipe at you. Like that. Ah, uh, the stage isn't all that bad though, it's, it's really short. Criminally short, almost. It has one problematic section with crushers later. Actually, by later I mean <laughs> about right now. At least it fills your energy up a little bit. I think this is... yeah. So, a crusher segment. Um, the main problem here is that the crushers don't seem to be in sync at the time you first enter the room. Um, and they're on a global timer because, you know, sometimes they'll just be really desynced. I got lucky there. I'm not gonna take my chances with these. Um, but, you know, if you're careful, that second to last pair is the only real problem one because they're not at the same height, so they won't be naturally synced. Um, just take your time if you're doing this, and you'll be fine. Otherwise, I don't really have much to say about this. Um, it's not boring, just kind of, uh, un it it's uninspired, and it's kind of forgettable. It's not awful. And that's the end. So, some quick facts about this Ramir machine. In previous versions of Revolution, the feet you're about to see for the first phase, these feet, used to be able to corner you, forcing you to use Wild Sprint to get out. Um, thankfully this is no longer the case, and the feet will no longer sync up. They'll never be both um, right next to each other, making it impossible for you to dodge. And there used to be shots coming from that R symbol you see up there that were removed, making the fight significantly more manageable. So, good edits all around, even if it does mean kind of neutering the difficulty. Now, you might be wondering, uh, Xeno, what's the AI for the second segment? And I don't know. And I don't care because it's weak to sand shield. This is what you do. And you might be wondering, well, what's the AI for the third se segment? And that also doesn't matter, because it's still weak to sand shield. So, I don't really care. Alright. Kind of an okay fight. But the first part is cool to manage with the uh, hitting the spikes in the feet. But otherwise, just kind of forgettable. Funny trail gag, just like in Mega Man 10. And looks like we have Mega Man 2 Wily 6, which, you know, that's never been referenced before, totally not. Ah, but this is a bit more grotesque, looking, that's for sure. So, here we have uh, alien stuff that's completely immune to all of your weapons. My professional recommendation is to just go past it with Wild Spring whenever you can. Got a proto man cutscene here. Woo. <laughs> you almost went in too deep. The Ion Blade? Okay. So we got a special weapon here. Alright, so what does this mysterious blade do? Well, for one thing, it allows you to actually kill the enemies, which is useful, and it's required for the final boss. So, yeah, that's fine. It's like Slash Claw, basically. That, that's essentially what this is. Oops. Um, by the way, these alien enemies suck because they come way too fast, and you're just never gonna really be properly prepared for them unless you know exactly where they are. Like, like if you're a tryhard like me and already know purely because of the no damage runs, this stage was a huge pain in the no damage run. I pretty much used wild the whole stage. Just like this. Pretty much. And 
And honestly, even in a casual playthrough, this strategy works just fine. Weapon tank, just so you don't run out of the Ion Blade because it's required for the final boss. Uh, I think I'm gonna E tank just because I can. So that stage, kind of uh, a mess, honestly. There's a tile missing from the, the bottom right corner of that uh, door as well. Of uh, the wall, I should say. Um, that stage, kind of just a mess, but like, at least it's atmospheric. So, Ramir turns into this weird Viking alien or whatever, um, and this attack is, well, I should say, this fight has three attacks. Here's one, the kind of orbs that are like the Mega Man 7 Wily Machine. Okay, he does it again. These are pretty easy to avoid if you're not a complete mong like me. This attack where he just forcefully pushes you back, which is the worst one to avoid, especially no damage, because there's no tell for any of these. All this fight needed to be good. Literally all this fight needed to be a lot better was tells for the attacks. It could have been as simple as, like, changing the color of his eyes or something. That's all this fight would have needed. Um, so it's quite disappointing. As it stands, this is just kind of okay. If you feel like damage racing him, you can do that too, because you kill him faster than he kills you. So... Just wail on him if you really don't want to do this anymore. Which, I kind of wouldn't blame you. Alright, goodbye. And, well, here's some more exposition. Why well, must I explain to you? Okay, blah. I'm not human. Okay, we get it, bro. You don't like to look, look like a human. The evil energy, whatever. Destroyed everyone. Um, blah. Okay, now we have Le Epic Proto Man to help shut him up. Do you honestly believe that? Okay, alright, whatever. <laughs> I'm tired of this insolence. Alright, see you. And he blows up. So, Proto Man saves the day. And, well, that's the end. This game doesn't have a proper <laughs> ending credit sequence, as the game just stops on a black screen shortly after this point. Um, but... I'll start talking now, so that way I don't have to sit on a black screen. So, Mega Man Revolution. Now that we've been through the whole thing, what do I have to say about it? Well... The game has its... ups and downs. For me personally, it's a mediocre yet still fun experience, greatly helped by the fact that its weapon set is pretty good overall. Wild Sprint alone adds significant enjoyment to the game for me, and the weapons are powerful enough or have good, good enough tables that it's fun just to, if nothing else, just run through and blast enemies. If you play it rompy, it gets more enjoyable. The level design in some places is good, in other places lacking. Never really outright bad, more so the sins it commits are being bland. Pyroman stage is almost empty, Cryoman stage just has a lot of either filler or really underutilized stuff. Some other specific stages, Sondabar 1, just kind of throwing stuff all over the place. It leaves a strange taste in your mouth. Although the game has enough merits, namely, you know, it's nicely put together, the game has Pretty intelligent story, you know, this is fine. I think the story actually works some better than some other classic games, like, it's better than the nonsense of Mr. X and Mega Man 6. But, it doesn't take itself too seriously. I, I think it's a neat game. It's definitely worthy of a remake, which is why I'm happy that Revo Remix is a thing. And, well, I don't know if I have much more to say about it. I'd recommend that everyone give this a try, maybe once. Um, and if you enjoy it, then you can go for those other achievements I bothered to do. I would say that going back for all those actually did me give me a kind of new appreciation for the game, considering that, uh, you know, it was well built enough, in some places more than others, to be possible no damage, although Wild Sprint, <laughs> definitely a godsend in that regard. I think that's about all I have to say for this game. If you'd like to weigh in on what you'd like to see next for this channel, 
either hit me up on Discord, leave a comment, or contact me however else you like. And, for whatever I decide to do next time, I'll see you guys later. Credits isn't going to be too much longer. And... Well, this wrapped up nicely, I guess. I can't ignore cross-eyed Dr. Light here. What is that sprite? Oh lord. <laughs> Alright, yada yada yada, story about evil energy. And, well, that's it. See you guys next time. This is Zeno, signing off.